welcome back to The Collective. This is your yin practice, the last class in our gratitude series. Thank you so much for joining me on this journey this month. What you're going to need for this class, a yin practice is where we get super chill and we get nice and deep into stretches. We uh, stay close to the floor. So keep some extra layers on, grab a couple of cushions. You might want a blanket. You know the drill, anything to make it more cozy for yourself. Create your space. If you can, try and make that space really nice and zen. You might drop the lighting, add a few candles, <laughs> whatever you want to make it a really uh, lovely space to spend the next half hour. The first pose we are going to begin with is child's pose. So just come onto your knees. I will meet you there and we'll make a start. on your knees, moving into your child's pose, your choice with the knees. If you want something a little bit more for the hips, maybe the hips are a little bit tight um, today, take the knees wide. Not super wide, but wider than your hips, so you create a little V-shape with the legs. Maybe the lower back is a little bit tight, you want to focus a little bit more into that area. Bring the knees a little more closer so you create that kind of shelf under the tummy. Once you kind of decide what shape you want to go for, lean forwards and I want you to focus on hips to heels. Drop the chest, either just coming onto the forearms. Now you might stack the hands and bring your forehead onto your hands. You might use one of your cushions or maybe two cushions like a pillow. If you've got a bolster, lovely option, run the bolster um, kind of lengthwise up your mat and you can lie your chest, turn the head and place your head on it as well. Really nice option. The main thing for child's pose to begin, hips to heels. So I want to focus on this compression at the hip crease and on releasing as much as you can down to the ground. So if your head doesn't quite touch the floor, do not worry about it. Use your props as support. Once you're there, close your eyes. Allow the breath to expand. Give yourself a few minutes to land into the pose. Arrive consciously into the shape. Check in with your body. The sensations you're feeling make any minor adjustments. And once you're ready to settle, try not to fidget. The only movement is that subtle rise and fall of the breath. And we start to connect to our practice, connect to ourself. So if you've had a busy day, if your bodies are pretty tight, I want you to just allow yourself the time to slowly release. Sometimes it's not easy diving straight into a yin practice where you've got to be still and calm and quiet. You need a few moments, maybe even a few poses in order to Kind of quiet the outside world in order to still your mind and calm your nervous system. So just take that time that you need, breathing it out.
If you start to feel like the body is a little bit sticky, if your body is resisting the ground, just here for one more minute, can you breathe a little more deeply? Direct the breath into the areas where it's sticky. Expand the shape where you can, back of the ribs, down the spine. Feel a sense of comfort as you bow towards the ground. Last five or six breaths. Take a big inhale, open the mouth, breathe. <sighs> well done, start to press the ground away, move slow, move any props out your way. We're gonna go forwards to tabletop. So just rise onto the knees, send the hands forwards, adjust the knees underneath you, start to stretch one leg back, start to stretch the other leg back to release behind the knees, and the hip flexors. Stretch it out and do whatever feels natural here. If you wanna make it a little twisty, you might want to roll the hips a little bit, kind of whatever feels natural. And then in your own time, come to sit on your bottom. So the next two shapes we'll do on one side, both, both poses, we'll then do them on the other side. They're both shapes that we've done already in this series. So we're just kind of bringing it all together here with this last, this last practice. Scooch forwards, make sure you're at the top of your mat or wherever is uh, kind of the most space for you. Take a bend in the left knee, open the knee out to the side and just move any flesh from out from under the sit bones. Start to lean forwards. One hand comes either side of the leg. Now again, if you're working with a tight lower back, sit on something, sit on your cushion or a block. If you're working with tight hamstrings today, grab your cushion, place it on top of your thigh, lift your chest over the top, the arms over the top, using the cushion to support the space between your leg and your chest. Let the head bow forwards and down, relax and drop into the shoulders. Feel the length of the spine, relaxing through the toes, the ankles, soft in the knees. Start to breathe, this is where we begin. Coming back to gratitude, it being the simple act of finding happiness in what you have already, rather than seeking or reaching for something you don't have that you think is going to make you happier. Not easy to do in society today in the way um, a lot of stuff is thrust upon us, the way we get an insight into everybody's diamond life on social media. Not many people so show the rough side, they always show the diamond side. So it's quite can be quite challenging to not want what you don't have or not want what you can't have. But if you let go of judgment, if you let go of the need for approval, if you let go of material, kind of this idea of being super materialistic, all elements to our yoga practice, um, the philosophy, philosophy behind the practice that helps us um, shape how we want to live, then we can start to just find contentment as we are. 
And that can lead to a more true happiness. Doing well, everybody. One more minute. Just let that melt in. Finish with a deep inhale, let it go. <sighs> Start to lift up, pull back, take your time. Nice, release that cushion out the way if you had one to hand, lean back. I'm sure you guys know what I'm working towards, wiggle the knees. Yep, my favorite, windscreen wiper those knees. It does just the right job to release that rebound. Little twisty twisty for the hips. So then when you bring your knees back to the middle, we're gonna take the soles of the feet together, sit tall. And we're gonna move this into Gamukasana, working with now the right leg on top. So you're going to feed your left ankle, point the toe under your right leg so the thigh faces forwards. Take your right ankle, drop the thigh over the top, pointing through the blades of the feet. If you know the hips are pretty tight, sit on a cushion. If there's a big gap between your knees, you want the knees one over the top of the other, both facing 12 o'clock. You could always put a cushion in that hole. So your choice, whatever is needed, lean forwards. If the support isn't quite enough because the hips are really tight, feel free to just bring it back to easy pose, sitting cross-legged, right shin in front of left, fold forwards, all good, totally fine. Start to melt over the, the legs, three minutes. One tool we can use to help us work towards contentment, to help us feel um, grateful for what we have and where we are, is to just bring it down to a small thing, focusing on, most recently, the one thing that made you smile. So something... Uh, that you achieved, maybe in your work or at home, uh, a person that uh, perhaps gave you help or was there for you or um, was just a little bit thoughtful, maybe just a randomer on the street who smiled at you as you walked past. Um, it could be a pet, um, our four-legged friends, just showing their excitement when you walk back in the door, whatever it is, just something that made you feel good, that made you smile. And I want you to just take a hold of that and let it fill you up. I've talked about it this series. And that is one really nice way of um, helping you realize the good that you have already. And it can help you not feel um, as though there is more that you want. Let that fill you up. Let it fill you with positivity and light and warmth and love. And maybe even a smile crosses your face.
coming through the last three or four breaths. Just melt into those hips. Well done. Start to lift on up. Take your time. Be careful as you unravel the legs. Just be conscious of the knees. Stretch the legs out. Have a little wiggle and release. Now you can either go back to windscreen wipers with the knees or you could perhaps go to a little reverse tabletop just to stretch out that front body. Bringing the hips back to the floor if they're lifted. And we're gonna head to the second side. So the left leg goes out straight. Pull the right heel in, right knee drops open. Have a little wiggle. Feel free to sit on your cushion if needed or the cushion comes on top of the leg. I mean, I'm pretty good in this pose. My hamstrings aren't too bad today, but just for a feeling of extra comfort, I'm gonna work with the cushion on top. Just because you don't need the props doesn't mean you can't use them if they help you feel a little uh, more secure in the pose. Lean forwards. One hand just comes to rest either side. Relax the leg, relax the head, shoulders. Soften into the breath. And you want to kind of just feel your weight get heavier and kind of ease you into the shape. It might kind of wiggle the pose a little bit to what is natural for your body, natural for your skeleton, for uh, how the muscles feel today. So just let that happen. If you need to make any adjustments, wiggle the cushions about, you take your time to do that. And then you arrive into stillness. Yin practice, finding that stillness, although not easy all the time, is important. The stillness allows us to relax. By relaxing the muscles, we extend the stretch to the ends of the muscles towards the joints. And doing this now and again is really healthy for our joints. The ligaments, tendons, and the fascia of our muscles. Find stillness, calm your mind, just breathe it out, couple more minutes. Doing really well, everybody. Nearly there on this side. Can you drop a little lower? Can you move a little bit deeper? Perhaps it's just finding a little more stillness. <laughs> We got last three or four breaths. Keep going all the way to the end. So good. Yes, yogis, rise up, take your time, release. 
gently move out the shape, lose the cushion, lean back, have that little wiggle. So I'm gonna go back to the sway of the knees. It's just nice to um, kind of roll the hips in to get that internal rotation because one of the hips spends um, three minutes turned out. So it's just nice to kind of give it a little twist the other way. All right. When you've had enough of that, come back to your butterfly, soles of feet together. Moving into Gamukasana on the second side. In yin, we call it shoelace, the cross of the legs. <laughs> Again, if you noticed that the hips were tight and you did prefer to sit into your easy pose, just sitting cross leg, feel free to head there instead. This time it's right thigh under left. So feed the right foot through take the left knee on top of the right knee. So ideally you're looking to line up the knees vertically. Sit on something if you need that extra lift. Use cushions as space fillers if needed. Make sure the feet just point with the shins, don't flex unless you're in easy pose. If you're sitting cross-legged, get those ankles turned out. It'll help target that outer hip area. Start to lean it forwards from wherever you are. And we find our last pause before Shavasana. Forward folding. I've included it a lot in this series uh, because uh, it helps invite this sense of self. And I've spoken about it before in the series, comforting oneself. Uh, and that is one of the underlining elements of gratitude. It comes from within. Um, so you've got to just take a little look inside, support yourself, maybe have a few strong-ish words with yourself. If perhaps you find that you kind of run away with things a little bit and just come back to what's real in your life, what's important in your life, who are the important people, um, and just hold on to those and work towards, um, work towards those at your own pace, in your own time. Not comparing yourself to somebody else's five years later, which is, so much easier said than done sometimes. <laughs> and that's in particular with your practice as well. If you're committed, if you regularly come to your mat, you will see progress. You will develop and move forward with your body and with your, your focus. Don't force it. Same can be said off your mat as well. Bring it back to the here to the now, all the things that our practice teaches us are ways to help ourselves live happier, more content lives. And if there's anything the past year or so has taught us with the pandemic, it's that we need to just be uh, grateful for what we've got. And that doesn't mean we take away ambition or vision or goals, of course not. Um, but we can just keep ourselves a little grounded. You've got it, guys. Just another five or six breaths. Feel that connection to yourself. Love yourself. Take a nice big inhale, open the mouth, sigh it away, let it go. <sighs> Start to rise on up. 
lean back, carefully unravel the legs, just like that, we've made it to the end of our practice. Have a little wiggle, shake it out. Maybe add that final reverse tabletop. Coming back to the ground, start to arrive into Shavasana. So your choice, how you make this super comfortable, guys, I'm gonna go for just a cushion under the knees. You could go one cushion under each knee so you can have the legs a little wider, use your blocks maybe. Grab your blankets, put on some extra layers, socks on, whatever, <laughs> whatever you need to make this more cozy. And we are gonna land lying down. Take the hands to rest wherever feels most comfortable. Let the toes roll open. Close your eyes and just working from the top of your head through your body all the way to the tips of your toes. Relax every muscle across your face in the shoulders, down to the hips, the knees, all the way through the legs. Relax everything into the ground. Connect to the earth beneath you. This moment in time, this place in your practice. And as we find our last moment of stillness together, just enjoy the peace the peaceful peacefulness that is Shavasana. Breathe in through your nose, breathe out your mouth. <sighs> Let the breath get bigger as you start to come back into your space. Wiggle fingers, wiggle toes, come back into your body.
Enjoy a nice stretch of the arms overhead before hugging your knees to your chest. Give them a squeeze, maybe a gentle rock side to side until you fall softly all the way over onto one side. Using a hand, press up to a comfortable seated position. Perhaps choosing to leave the eyes closed, resting the hands in your lap. Sit tall, slightly tuck your chin to your chest. Broaden across the chest, shoulders back and down. Together, take an inhale through your nose, rounding the lips, blow that breath away. Let your breath fall back to its natural rhythm. Bring your palms together at the heart. Thank yourself for the time, for the energy you've given to your practice. Bowing down into each other. Namaste. Thank you so much for joining me in this series of gratitude. I hope you were able to take something from it. Happy New Year. <laughs> I hope you have a fun celebration. Thank you for being a part of my collective, for enjoying these classes with me. Any questions, anything uh, I can help with, please do get in touch. You know where to find me. See you soon, yogis.